Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the best diabetes medicine. Now, first of all, do you need a medicine? The second of all, which one is the best? Should you need a medicine? If you have diabetes or pre-diabetes or insulin resistance, that is a great channel. Please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on your notifications. That way you can get all the videos and you don't miss anything make sure you share on the social media so we can reach out to more people and as an endocrinologist my goal is to educate you guys most of you are either going to doctors or trying to educate yourself and half the time you're either not getting the right information or you're not getting any information at all and i'm hoping that these videos will be a great help for you Again, as you all know, there are medication people and there are anti-medication people. There are some people out there, they think that diabetes is only a sugar disease, so if you don't eat sugar, there will be no diabetes. And there are some people out there who say as well, I, I don't want to change all my life, I want to continue my way of life and still control my diabetes. So everybody has a different opinion, everybody thinks they know the best, uh, although I think it's a great idea to talk to an expert and listen to the videos, educational videos, but make sure you guys are hearing from the real experts. Now, let's get into what is the best diabetes medicine. Now, the best diabetes medicine, in my opinion, is no diabetes medicine, right? So if you can achieve that with the weight loss goals, with our diet, with our exercise. Now, this is for motivated individuals. Some people are very motivated, they get diagnosed. Their A1C is like 15% or something like that, and they are like, you know what, I'll do it myself. They go on a strict diet, they exercise, they change everything. Their A1C comes down to 5%, that's great. But that may not last too long. Sometimes people start getting lax, you know, life gets in the way, they start going back to their diet again, like the old diet. And then eventually the, the blood sugar starts creeping up if they stop monitoring and blah, blah. So a lot of things can get complicated in the long term. And not only that, diabetes is a progressive disease. If you just let it cook, it's just gonna get worse and worse. So it's better to be aggressive in the beginning and if you guys are doing diet and exercise, you're really trying uh, to reduce your carbs going on a keto diet if you're a keto person. Not my personally, my favorite, everybody's different. And maybe you have to make sure that you watch our keto video where we explain who should not be on keto diet. Because not everybody is a candidate for keto diet, but regardless, there are a lot of great diets, Mediterranean diet with low, low, low carbohydrate, for example. These are great diets that you, you, that can control your diabetes with no medicine or very minimal medications. Now, what is important in diabetes care, so there's something called legacy effect. Legacy means that if you control your diabetes early on, the legacy of that early control will last with you towards the end of your life. But if you don't care about your diabetes for the first 10 years, even if you decide to control with the best diet and exercise, you will still have problems and it's going to be very hard to control without a medicine. Now in my practice, since I'm a specialist, people come to me as a referral from other doctors and by the time they come to me, it's already like 10 to 15 years of diabetes, they have already been on multiple medications, they have been on multiple diets and they're tired of it, nothing is working, they come and tell me, okay doc, what can I do, what can you do for me? Now, I'm like, you know, we can do a lot of things for you. Now, what are you willing to do? Number one, it's the most important thing, right? So I can give you the best diabetes medicine, but if you're not taking that medicine, that's a problem. I can give you the best diabetes medicine, but if it is too expensive for you, you cannot really do much about it. You cannot, if you cannot pay for it, right? But the thing is, over the years, I came up with a special formula. And that special formula depends on the person. So everybody on the internet or people making videos or on the media or whatever they are all trying to sell one single product like keto channels they want to sell you keto diets uh you know this medication channels tries to sell you this medication but it, it actually in reality doesn't work that way so metformin for example some people love metformin some people hate metformin well that's because metformin is not for everybody there are candidates for metformin there are no candidates for metformin now 
Let's talk about glipizide or gliburide or glimepiride. These are dirty, cheap medications. A lot of people are on it. Some people do fine on it, majority do not. But I wouldn't trash those medications just because, you know, I cannot just make a class action against the whole medication group and saying, oh no, because one of the patients had a side effect, so I'm not gonna use the medication ever again. That's not true because there's a lot of people that still do great on medications that some other people don't do well. Now, my job as a doctor, again, we consider this more than a science, it's like an art. So what I do, I look at my patient, okay, what is, what is he or she has done? What's going on with her body or his body? What is, uh, uh, what can really work based on their, how long they had diabetes, if they have a kidney disease, if they have liver disease, if they have other complications, the other medications they're on. There's so many factors and also their lifestyle. What are they doing? Are they working in the field, sweating all day long? Are they on a desktop, a jo on desk job? Are they, um, you know, in terms of psychologically, are they into taking pills or injections? Uh, or are they motivated for diet and exercise? All these things count before we make a decision. Now, when it comes to which medication is better overall, yes, there is actually probably, uh, we can start uh, from a top ranking medication to the lowest ranking medication. If you try to give a score, uh, an overall score for every medication, I have my own best medication. Uh, again, that may not be the best for you, so don't write, start writing comments, oh, I have done horrible on this drug or whatever, uh, just because what happens to you doesn't apply to everybody, right? So uh, I, I'm just gonna go by uh, the studies, but also my experience with my patients, right? So in my opinion, the best diabetes medicine uh, for uh, overall in entire diabetes medication classes is GLP-1 class. GLP-1 is a gastrointestinal hormone. Uh, and what happens is when you guys eat something, right, that creates insulin production. So how does that happen? You know, it doesn't happen miraculously. It happens because the gastrointestinal hormones kick in and these hormones alert your pancreas to make insulin. Now, most people think that their body don't, doesn't make insulin, but that's not true. Their body can make insulin, it's just that you do not have the necessary tool. It's like if your car is not starting, doesn't mean that your car is trash. Maybe, you know, there may be a minor problem. Maybe you have no gas or maybe uh, ignition is not working. So, you know, you have to just find out once you fix that problem, suddenly your car starts working. So there are a lot of medications, for example, that fixes the defects. So think about this. Diabetes is not just insulin problem or just eating problem. So your body regulation is very complex. Contrary to the people who think that diabetes happens because you eat sugar, that is not true. Because for you to be able to make insulin, there are eight different factors that are involved. Your brain is involved, your gut, your intestinal system is involved, your liver is involved, your glucagon hormone is involved, um, your muscles, your fats are involved. So there's so many things that play a role in insulin resistance. It, it, just saying that, oh, just stop eating sugar and you'll be fine. Uh, maybe partly, at, to, to say the least, partly true, uh, but in reality, most patients, even if they can control their diabetes with diet and exercise at first, most of them eventually, depending on their severity of their diabetes, they will, they will need medications. Now, GLP-1 class are their four medications. I think it's four. Ozempic is number one in terms of the efficacy. There comes Trulucity after that, but I think Trulucity and Victoza is this, in terms of the efficacy, Trulucity and Victoza is the same. And most people like Victoza and Ozempic better than Trulucity. Uh, just because Trulicity is a weekly agent and, you know, it doesn't really last a week. Uh, but Ozempic uh, is a weekly, Victoza is a daily injection. And there's a Ribalsus that's actually a pill form. So it's not, not all the GLP-1s are injections. Now there's Ribalsus, which is a pill. Um, and then Biderian is, is also there too. I really don't like Biderian too much because the needle is huge. 
I sometimes joke with my patients. I'm like, hey, if I don't like you, I'll give you this Bidarin because it's like some of my patients call that pen a rocket because it's huge. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know, I really like you, so I'm not gonna give you that medication. But sometimes insurance dictates they say, oh, if you want this class of medications, that's the only one we'll give you back because that's like a 50 bucks cheaper. Okay, then, well, we sometimes try it. If they, if they don't like it, we switch the medications and so forth. But the bottom line, GLP-1 is the best. Now, if you have an underlying heart failure, that's a different situation, right? So then we use different class of medications because nowadays we uh, understood that the diabetic medications are not just to treat the blood sugars. We are also treating other things. Like for example, Ozempic and Victoza, uh, they have actually proved to reduce the heart attacks and strokes quite significantly. So if you're going to use a medication, don't use the medication just to reduce your blood sugars, but ask the question, does that medication have any other benefit? What are the side effects of the medication? So is the benefit more than the risk, right? So that's the conversation between you and your doctor. I'm just giving you a general idea about the, these medications and what I perceive as the best for, for my patients. But let's say you're a, you're a relatively young, 45, 50 year old gentleman, come to me and you're like, you know, I'm, I'm too busy, I'm a truck driver, I can't really do your diet thing, you know, just give me a medication, fix me up. In this situation, I ask them, do you have cardiovascular disease, do you have heart failure, do you have, we look at all these things. And most of the time, you know, when people have diabetes, they are very high risk for cardiovascular disease. So I tell them, okay, well, let's give you a medication that will bring your blood sugar down, that will bring your appetite down, that's going to reduce your risk of heart attacks and strokes. They're like, oh, that sounds good to me. Yeah, to me too, right? So why not? So I try to use medications that cause weight loss as well as reduce the risk of heart attacks and reduce your blood sugars. So reducing your blood sugars is not everything. You know, just because your blood sugars are down now doesn't mean that you're gonna do well. So because, remember guys, blood sugar elevation is the end result. So by the time your blood sugar is high, you already have high risk factors for cardiovascular disease, your cholesterol is messed up, you may have a blood pressure, all those things. Yes, diet helps, but by the time you, you get there, you are still at high risk for cardiovascular disease and heart attacks, so you still have to reduce that risk. Anyways, GLP-1 drugs are good at reducing the weight, and they are good at reducing the heart attacks. Not all of them, because you know they have done studies, some of them were able to show it, some of them were not. Ozempic and Victoza did a great job. They showed significant reduction in death from heart attacks and so forth. Uh, so as a result, those are those have been my favorite drugs uh, because they cause a lot of weight loss. They cause a reduction in the heart attacks and strokes. Now, uh, when it comes to the next agent, the next best agent or agents in my mind is SGLT2 inhibitors. So what these drugs do, they basically make you urinate your blood sugars. Now these are Jardians, Farsiga, uh, Inmacana, and Staglatra. Now Jardians also has cardiovascular benefit as well, and it is a pill. Uh, it also causes weight loss because you're basically urinating excessive blood sugars. Uh, so now you're gonna tell me that, okay, well doc, normally if my blood sugars are high, I'm peeing the blood sugar anyways, right? Well, that's correct. But you start actually urinating your blood sugars after your blood sugar hits 220 or more, typically. Uh, but when you go below 220, which is still high, uh, at that point, you still want to get rid of these blood sugars. Now, there's two ways of getting rid of blood sugars, right? You are eating, uh, you are either getting the glucose within the cells back into the body, and then if you don't spend that glucose with, with exercise, uh, then that's go it's gonna turn into fat, right? So that's why the old medications with diabetes, they cause a lot of weight. Yes, they reduce your blood sugars, but then they cause weight. So that's why I don't like those, like glipizide and glimepiride and so forth. Now, not everybody gets that problem, but a lot of people do. So that's why they are my least favorite. But when it comes to this Jardians, Farsiga, Invocana, etc., these drugs actually help with the weight loss. Now, also in the last few years, we discovered that these drugs, especially Jardians and Invocana, along with Farsiga as well, they were able to show reduction in the heart failure. Now, heart failure is a very common in older diabetic patients. And that's also another reason for hospitalizations, another reason for death from diabetes, before even you think about going blind or losing your leg, etc. So 
Most of the time, patients do not understand that, and they get caught in the idea that, oh, okay, I don't want to go to dialysis, but good luck with that, because, but it's, you know, for you to go to dialysis, you need to first stay, stay alive, so, you know, that's why I always say, okay, if you have heart failure or cardiovascular disease, I think using a medication like Jardines or Farsiga may be beneficial overall because they not only reduce your blood sugar, but also reduce your uh, heart failure risk up to 50-60% and that is quite significant. If you have had relatives or yourself been in the hospital for heart failure, believe me, it's like not fun. It's like you feel like you're being drowned, your lungs are full of water, you can't breathe, sometimes you go on a mechanical ventilation. Uh, it's, it's a mess. So if we can avoid that, uh, great. So it, again, just diet and exercise sometimes does not do that. Uh, as a result, you know, medications are there for a reason. I'm not a pro medication doctor, but I use the medications on the right place, on the right patient. And of course, affordability is a big problem. So if your insurance doesn't cover, we generally fight with your insurance to get the medication. We convince them to get the medication. Uh, we prove them that you need the medication and so forth and that takes a lot of time but that's what we do that's what we have to do for our patients um uh, thank god we're not charging hourly like the lawyers do god then will be a, the, the patients will be in trouble uh, so we have a big heart <laughs> so anyways so uh, that is a second class that i really like the third class i would say my favorite in diabetes care would be metformin now, metformin is actually a fundamental medication. It is uh, first line. The reason it's first line, not that it's better than um, the medications we talked about, just because it's very, very cheap. Um, now, recently there has been a metformin recall uh, for some companies because there's probably like 10 to 20 companies that make generic. Uh, they basically uh, are making generic metformin. Metformin is free at Publix. Like, you know, no, they're not really making much of money but they make it anyways. Uh, so bottom line is some of these companies had some contamination and I'm glad FDA is on top of it. The, the recall was done for co some companies, but majority of the metformin users are safe. Uh, so uh, metformin also has been shown to reduce the heart attack risk a little bit. Uh, it can cause a little bit of a weight loss um, and it can cause a lot of gastrointestinal problems. So it can cause diarrhea, constipation, uh, not constipation, I'm sorry, diarrhea, nausea, um, bloating and stuff like that can happen. Some people start tolerating metformin after a few weeks. Some people just cannot tolerate it at all. Um, but if they can tolerate it, it's so cheap that I think it's worth a try, especially if you do not have any complications, such as like severe kidney failure. Now, metformin again does not cause kidney failure. That's another like a big myth that people talk about all the time or metformin doesn't cause cancer, doesn't cause this, doesn't. So just be, if, if it was, you know, Believe me, like 80% of diabetics type 2 are on metformin. So it's not a medication that, um, that we hate. We actually love metformin. The only problem with metformin, again, as I said, you have to be careful if you have a severe liver failure and, or kidney failure. What happens is metformin may not be eliminated uh, through the kidneys and liver in this situation and cause accumulation, and that can be a problem. So as a result, you know, it's a good drug but it's not on the top of my list. I still use it for a lot of people if they can tolerate it because of the re re reduction in cost and many other benefits that the metformin can provide. Um, also, the, the next class would be uh, in terms of like the, um, the efficacy standpoint, I would say pioglitazone is a good agent. It makes the insulin sensitive. Uh, there are some side effects associated with it, such as it can cause like maybe a little bit of a weight gain, but the weight gain that comes with pioglitazone is not necessarily a um, horrible weight gain. It actually causes weight gain under your skin, and that weight under your skin is not the same fat as your uh, fat around your organs. Um, so, so as a result, you know, like there's a brown fat, there's visceral fat, there's different types of fat. So not every time you gain weight uh, means that you're going to have problems with it. Actually, when you start people on pioglitazone, for example, uh, they end up having better cholesterol, although they gain weight. So that's, that sounds paradoxical, but what happens is there's a, there becomes a shift in the body. So your fat around your organs, a shift under your skin, and that, that fat on your skin is metabolically good for you versus the, the fat around your organs are not. Okay, so 
There are some other agents as we talked, like there's insulins, there's uh, some other combination medications in the market. Um, uh, Genevia is there, you know, the Genevia is a common medication and it's really not very effective. Uh, I use Genevia on some patients if I have to, you know, for older people who are po possibly having dehydration problems from GLP-1 class or SGLT-2, which is part of the problem. Uh, again, we didn't talk about the side effects of the medications in great detail. I'm going to make a totally a separate uh, videos for side effects of all, all of these medications. This video was to kind of give you an idea about what are the best diabetes medications in the market right now. Um, but as I said, do not just um, you know, jump onto these medications or try to have your doctor prescribe it. Make sure you get a thorough evaluation uh, to make sure that that's still the right medication for you. If you're talking about the generalized terms, not necessarily specifically for you. Again, when you ask questions to me on the YouTube, it's very hard for me to answer because medicine doesn't work that way. We have to understand your entire body. We have to understand what's going on with you before we give you an answer. So if you want to become one of our patients, you can. We are going to start a coaching program. We also have um, a physician program. Right now, that's only available in Florida, which is going to spread to New York very soon. And we are going to spread across the United States, but it takes time, guys. So stick with us. We are going to also have, once we achieve 30,000 subscribers, we will have a, a private uh, videos, private channels. So I'm going to take your questions. Instead of answering you personally, I will make a video off of it, uh, etc. So it's gonna be uh, specifically for members. But uh, thank you for watching. As I said, there are other diabetic medications that I didn't want to dive into because you're going to get really confused. I think you should understand the best ones in the top, top three to five medications and the rest, uh, don't worry about them because uh, your doctor will decide for you. Uh, but I wanted to have you have an idea about uh, these medications so you at least um, uh, have some education at the background when you are using them. Again, make sure you subscribe, make sure uh, you give a thumbs up, give us a thumbs up, uh, and then make sure you share these videos with your loved ones. And have a wonderful day.